Welcome to Metaphysical Soul Speak. I'm your host, Elena Fox Starks. Hey guys, I hope that whenever and wherever you are, you are remembering to ingest all the proper nutrients for your body to be in tip top shape. That includes vitamin C taken directly from the number one food that has the highest amount of vitamin C. <laughs> Guess what? You guys, I found this out just like an hour ago and it blew my mind. So I'm going to quiz you. <laughs> what do you think has the highest amount of vitamin C in the whole world out of all the foods ever? Number one, blueberries. Number two, broccoli. Number three, oranges. Number four, lemons. Number five, sauerkraut. <laughs> All right, now insert the do 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 do. Oh, wait, I just inserted it. Anyway, <laughs> do you guys give up? It's actually sauerkraut. Isn't that so weird? I found out it has the highest amount of vitamin C, and I think it's like a full spectrum vitamin C. But when you just mix cabbage with salt, and that's it, nothing else, not even water, you just mix it with salt, and it makes its own brine, and you shove it into a mason jar, really like push it in there, and the brine comes up over the cabbage. And you could add a little bit of lemon juice if you want, but you don't have to. And you just basically cover it and let it ferment for like anywhere from two to six weeks, like four weeks on average. And it has enough, like one mason jar of sauerkraut. No, actually it's less than that. One cup of sauerkraut has the same amount of probiotics as eight bottles of the expensive probiotics that you buy at the health food store. I mean, it just blows my mind. And the highest amount of vitamin C compared to all the other foods out there. This is just on Dr. Berg's video today. I could not believe it. 700 milligrams in a serving of sauerkraut. Pretty crazy. In fact, the other day, my son and I were talking yesterday, actually, we were talking about um, making sauerkraut or what do we do? Because we couldn't find any. And my son's like, no, actually, I saw some in jars here at the store. The other day, actually, I thought about it because I thought maybe we might want to get some. And we had no idea about the nutritional value other than, well, it is pretty sour and we like fresh cabbage, but, uh, What's weird about that is there's not as much vitamin C in fresh cabbage. So what? How the hell does that happen? So to me, it seems like a magical food just because I don't understand the process, I suppose. (laughs) I don't know. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. So I thought I'd pass that crazy good information along. Probiotics are very, very, very good for your body. A sauerkraut, of course, would be a vegan one. So even if you're vegan, um, it would be very good for you. Um, if you're if you're not vegan and you're not vegetarian, you could add it with, you know, your favorite um, organic kosher hot dogs, I suppose. <laughs> the all beef ones are really good, but. Um, my kid and I were talking about the traditional meal of <laughs> of Halloween from their father's side. Both my kids grew up eating witch's hair and witch's noses, which is just basically the hot dogs and sauerkraut or bratwurst and sauerkraut. When, when they got older, we used like turkey bratwurst and uh, that with Brussels sprouts, which are also called Martian heads on Halloween. <laughs> 
But I just, it's like pretty crazy. I was like, wow, you know, it's really good to know. I had no idea about sauerkraut. So anyway, um, earlier today I got the weirdest craving. I started thinking about, uh, Frito-Lay corn chips, you know, Fritos. And so I've been thinking about them for a couple days. You can't get them here in South America. I've never been able to see them. And you can get corn chips, but they're more like the tortilla chip type, like Tostitos. And those are good too, but there's something special about the Frito-Lays. So I'm like, well, I've got, <clears throat> I've got some corn masa flour. My son was making patacones, which he learned how to make in Colombia. And he really wanted to have the pot of cone. So he's like, yeah, this is, this is cool. So, you know, I'm going to go buy this masa flour. And he came home and he made himself pot of conies and, and he made some other thing too. And he told me we could probably make cornbread. I'm like, yeah, you know, maybe we'll try to make a pot of homemade chili and cornbread. Sounds good. All right. And, um, I don't know. Today I tried to make Fritos it was a failure all the way around, but it was good, but it was a failure. <laughs> so all I did was I, you know, I know that Fritos on the ingredient list is, um, corn flour, oil, and salt, corn flour, corn oil, and salt. That's all three ingredients. So I thought, well, how hard could it be to make? So I went ahead and I mixed up the, um, corn flour with olive oil, figuring that would be an upgrade. It'd be, you know, healthier. Not that corn flour is all that healthy, but I was just like, oh, I'm really craving corn, <laughs> really craving the Fritos. So I, you know, you have to get creative when you live in a foreign country and they don't have all the foods that you like. Can't just run out and get Laura Scudder's uh, cheddar cheese puffs. Oh my God. Those were so good. And I started thinking about those the other day too. So anyway, I just started, I, I, I shaped it with the bowl and I very carefully cut it, put it in the pan where they quickly fell apart. So it was just like, I'm frying just, you know, dough, basically not even, it wasn't even sticking together. So it was just like a bunch of like oily powder, <laughs> but it smelled good. It smelled just like Frida's. I added sea salt, you know, Himalayan pink crystal salt. I'm like, okay, it's a little bit upgraded, a little bit good. All right. And so, um, I took a little bit out, put in a bowl, kind of blew on a little bit, took a bite of it, and it was so hot <laughs> that I burned the whole inside of my mouth, my tongue, everything. I mean, it was sizzling. I mean, even after like a few minutes, and I'd blown on it and everything, I forgot that olive oil retains heat more than other oils, and corn retains heat more than other vegetables, so... I mean, was sizzling like like pop rocks, sizzling like I cannot believe how freaking hot my mouth was. I, I spit it out on the floor. I was like, blah, <laughs> and my mouth is just burned. So I'm having a hard time talking right now. But um, I just held ice cold water in my mouth on my tongue for like ten minutes. I've done that a couple times and. It's better already, but it, I tried to drink hot tea and it her burned it all over again, even though it wasn't all that hot. And so I'd wait till the tea grew cold and i have just like two hours now. I've been sitting here just like <laughs> <laughs> making that noise, just trying to stop the burn. And it's like, well, you can't really put aloe vera on your tongue, right? So... I'm just waiting. I mean, I'm sure that once it burned, the olive oil just sealed that burn right in. Oh my God. I just feel like such an idiot. Like what, what was I thinking? I should just let it cool. Should let it sit for 10 minutes. And I didn't think about it because I haven't cooked with these, these two ingredients, let alone mixed together in a very long time. So <laughs> Let that be a lesson. If you want corn chips, just go buy corn chips or forget it. No. <laughs> oh my God, my tongue. Uh, it still hurts. Anyway, um, <laughs> all my fault too. The whole thing's all my fault. So, all right. I, um, I, I like how my 
little bit extra long episode turned out last night. I hope you guys enjoyed the ghost stories, the freaky stories, and also the love spell. You could cast that pretty much any time. I gave you two versions of similar um uh, Apple love spells to find out who your true love is and um, or at least who the next one is who's coming into your life and I um, I really it was just weird though like halfway through when all of a sudden my phone had been charged up to like 90 something percent like almost a hundred percent and I think that after I had gotten everything queued up and ready and I looked up a few things you know, just to make sure, and I was going to report about the right thing. I don't know. I think I was looking up some stuff on YouTube, but I had like maybe 93%. And then halfway through, I mean, usually if I have 52%, that's enough to record a whole show. So I have 90%. I should have been able to record at least a show and a half. And halfway through, it went down to 1%, and I realized it was 111 so 1% at 111 on 11-1. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is so spooky. What the hell? Usually it warns me at 10%, 14 and then 10%, and then 5%. It didn't warn me at all until, boom, 1% out of nowhere. Holy no. Holy moly. So I plugged the phone in and realized that the room was really, really cold, and I was surrounded by the spirits, and... I had to release them to heaven, help them get there. So really crazy. In fact, before I get really into the show today, I'm going to ask, are there any spirits here that need to be released to heaven? Answer is no, no one's here. I mean, it's chilly in my room because, you know, the Duende, I think, might have had a hand in helping me rip the handle off my window so I can never permanently close it now. I have, I have like a list of things for handyman. One of these days I'm going to call handyman and have him fix everything. (laughs) I mean, it's just, it's not that old of a building. So it was just a wonky handle, I guess, or a supernatural force called the little Duende who I love him. He's so cute. He's really little. I only saw him once out of the corner of my eye and he was like, maybe I'd have to say about six or seven inches tall. He's not very big. He's very rambunctious, though, and he has hid stuff, stolen stuff, um, moved things, tied things in knots. <laughs> uh, but I like having him around. He's a cute little guy. All right, so I have a feeling one day we're going to like open a drawer somewhere, and it's just going to be like all the stuff he stole and a bunch of money. <laughs> I have a feeling it's going to be something like that. We're going to be like, oh my God, Wendy. (laughs) So, um, yesterday I announced at the very end of the show that I was contacted by a really awesome woman by the name of Jenner Deal. And A, she has a super cool name and... (laughs) B, she is a viral marketer. She is really, really good at what she does, and she's making a name for herself in the world of marketing. And she contacted me, and she wants to work with me to get the word out of, from, or of, I don't know, what's my preposition there? Anyway, basically, she wants to tell the world about Metaphysical Soul Speak, the podcast. So, I am absolutely thrilled to the teeth about this woman. And I wanted to tell you guys some really cool things about her. Um, She's done a lot of work on various campaigns that some were local or regional and some are national. And I'm like blown away by this. But um, one of them that she worked on is the more recent one is she is the now known as the outspoken lesbian tampon crusader <laughs> for West Hollywood. And I'm like, hell yeah, that is the coolest thing ever. So basically, she started to realize that a lot of people that visit West Hollywood don't always have money to purchase tampons or they find themselves 
at the clubs. And if you don't know, if you're not in the gay community, you know, if, the, if you're not in the LGBTQIA community, the thing is, um, WeHo <laughs> or West Hollywood is one of the hottest places in LA to go dancing and to go meet someone who would be, well, more to your liking than the cisgendered heteronormative world that you find pretty much everywhere else. (laughs) West Hollywood has the best clubs with the best music. I used to spend every Tuesday and every Saturday for years dancing in a club um, with my friend who at the time was like, I just like the music and now he's totally gay. But he did make that transition for about a year or two where he called himself bisexual and then finally, okay, fine. I'm just full blown gay, whatever. (laughs) <laughs> which was cool because during that transition phase for him, I got to go out dancing and I had a blast. One time I was dancing in a club there and Madonna was in a secret room watching the whole audience members. And a few people were, um, taken off the dance floor and taken into the back room up like upstairs and then in a back room and then later they announced to the whole club madonna was here she picked she was she's here now she picked all of her dancers for her next madonna tour okay so west hollywood weho is a big big deal as far as like the talent there and just everything. It's just, it's just, it's like a, a trend setting hot spot for the LGBTQIA community the world over. So, but one thing that uh, Gender Deal had noticed is that they did not have um, like free tampons. And what was unfair about this, I mean, it sounds weird at first, like, well, no one gets free tampons. What are you talking about, Lena? <laughs> But in West Hollywood, you could go anywhere and get free condoms. You know, like you walk into the club, you walk into a bar, you walk in anywhere and there's like, you know, a fishbowl full of, you know, every color of the rainbow condom, everything, you know. And so why should we provide something for men's reproductive health? Because women clearly don't use tampon, I mean, don't use condoms, right? But we're like doing nothing for women's reproductive health. Right. And it's like really embarrassing, you know, like what is the emergency thing a man in West Hollywood in a gay club needs? The emergency thing would be like, Ooh, he's hot. I like him. Let's go to the bathroom. And oops, I don't have a tan- um, a condom. Well, <laughs> what happens with women? It's not that insane. It's more like, Okay, I'm here dancing in the club. All right, having a great time. And oh my God, I just started my period. Holy crap, I don't have a tampon. And there's no stores. I know there's one store in WeHo, but it's like you have to go kind of a ways away. And if you don't know where it is and, you know, it's just, it's like kind of ridiculous. It's like, why are there no machines of tampons? And some places there are, but it's few and far between. Why not give away free tampons? So the whole city of West Hollywood Anytime you're in West Hollywood, you could go get free tampons now, thanks to Jenner Deal. So I think that's really cool. So it's like, you know, if we're giving away something free for men, we should give away something free for the ladies too. And I agree. And I think that's awesome. In fact, several cities around the United States have now started to give away free tampons. I think it was in Philadelphia in in high schools they're like we're just going to give away free tampons to the girls because it's bad enough you're like out somewhere and you start your period and you're like oh my god I don't you know if you're early you know and you don't know when it's going to come early because obviously (laughs) early (laughs) so when out flows in town you need something and it's not always readily available well In several cities across the U.S., it's now becoming readily available and for free. Tampons are not a luxury item because you need them every single month if you are of reproductive age. And guess what? You know, it should be something that is, you know, just like everything else. Like I've gone to um, health clinics uh, just for whatever. Like uh, what did I went one time for... 
usually you go to the women's clinics for like birth control, but I went for something else. Maybe it was just an AIDS test, you know, or like a, just to make sure I didn't have HIV or whatever. You know, just the usual, like if you're a sexually active adult, you need to go every six months, right, to get your test. So I think it was just one year I went in the, at the end of my appointment without even asking me if I'm, you know, straight and sleeping with men. They didn't ask me who I'm sleeping with. They literally just handed me a box of condoms, like 50 condoms. I'm like, oh my God, did I say I'm a prostitute? Like what, why would I, how could I ever possibly use 50 condoms? Like even in a year, like, I'm like, oh my God, it came for an HIV test because I wanted to start dating again. And it was right after my divorce and it was just ridiculous. But, (laughs) but I was like, Hey, thanks for the free condoms. I ended up giving out, giving them all away to my friends. But why didn't they hand me a bag of tampons also? You know, that's like a lot more helpful. I mean, at that time I was still, you know, reproductive age and, and the period still happened. And I kind of feel like that would have been a lot more helpful back in the day. You know, I probably would have gotten my health checked a lot more often. If I knew they're going to give me like this massive bag of like 50 to a hundred tampons, I would have been like, Oh, hell yeah. I'll come back in a couple months when I don't, you know, I mean, it's like, it should be that way. Anyway, Jenner deal. Thank you for that. Thank you for making we Ho better. So she did that. Also, she just recently worked on the Pampers, John Len, uh, John Lennon, not John Lennon. He's dead. Excuse me. John legend. They have this massive campaign that she worked on and, and she helped, uh, the John Lend John legend come together with, uh, Pampers in order to put in, 5,000 baby changing tables in men's rooms across America because guess what? You know what? Dads are proactive parents too. Dads change diapers too. And it's like you can't balance a baby on a little, on a sink or on a counter. You know, it's, it's ridiculous. Babies need baby changing tables. And, you know, and a lot of times dads end up trying to change their baby's diaper on the floor of a men's room. Ew, uh, you know, so she was responsible for that as well and played a huge role in getting the word out there and Pampers donated the tables and John Legend talked about it because he's got two kids in diapers right now. He's a Grammy award winning um, singer. If you don't know who he is, I I, I like his music. I barely know who he is. Like, I, I, I don't know if he's writing his own music or just singing it. Or I think he is a singer songwriter though, but, um, I can't even remember the name of the song, but he's saying the song that I just, my son and I randomly will burst out singing his song every now and again. Um, I don't know. It's a, it's a love ballad. He's, he's amazing anyway. So for that, thank you also, because I mean, I raised my two kids with my husband until, nine years ago when he died and, um, and he was always like, well, there's no baby changing table. So you've got to change your babies. Every time we were at Costco or at a mall or in a restaurant, it was just like, I was on having to take care of it all the time. And he was just like, sorry, there's, you know, there's nothing I can do. I can't go in the ladies room. And I, there's like literally nowhere to do it in the men's room. And, and it was always a frustrating thing. And, when they were older and they could use the restroom, he also felt creepy taking them in to the men's or at least, you know, taking the, our daughter, our oldest in the men's room was creepy. He had to do that a couple of times. He came home just, he says, I felt so bad. Like I had to shield her eyes. And then I had to explain like why. And then the men felt like perverts. Like it was like a very odd thing. So we need to do something about that too. I think that, and also I think it's don't you guys think it's weird that when men go into a bathroom, they're just hanging it out there. It doesn't mean that all men want to see other men's dicks. I don't think that's true. I think it's very embarrassing and emotionally uncomfortable. Right. And it's just like, why do you want to see another man pee? I don't think you do. So I think that there should be booths or more private, you know, things. Because sometimes 
there are single fathers in the world with daughters and their daughters are really little and they have to take them to the bathroom and if they go into the men in the women's bathroom then they get the police called on them because now they're perverts in the women's bathroom but they don't want to make let allow a stranger to take them into the women's bathroom that's creepy you know and then there's um you know, and then you go in the men's room and there's just dicks swinging all over the place you know it's like really really crazy it's something needs to be done about this like it's not the 1950s anymore so okay jenna i know you're gonna be listening to this because you are a fan of the show that might be the next thing you know i think that in men's rooms uh men deserve privacy so you know (laughs) sometimes i want to look at each other's dicks but not usually you know it's just kind of weird like with women we don't have our you know separate you know toilet behind closed doors to go number two and then the open one where we just pee in a trough you know what i mean and thank god for you know for that at least as women we have our privacy but i think that men should have uh, you know a fair um amount of privacy as well i think it's just a matter of respecting themselves and that might be why men feel the need to just you know, send their dicks all over creation, you know, oh, hey, you're on Tinder, let me get your number, baby, next thing you know, you get a bunch of, you know, it's like, it's like you're being video raped, you know, it's like, why are you showing that to me, I never asked, you know, I I don't really, I I don't really need to see that, that's, you just showed me your personality in that picture of your dick, you know, (laughs) I just had to delete and block someone. I deleted and blocked him. I, I complained about him a couple months ago on the show. And then just like two days ago, he sent the same thing. And I'm like, what the hell? But on, on WhatsApp, he forgot he had my number, I guess. And so he just instead of saying hi, instead of saying, hey, how are you? What are you doing? He literally just sent a picture of him, a, a video of himself doing uh bad things to his body <laughs> and i just i didn't watch the video i could tell what it was i was just like that's it reported him delete block sorry you know it's like don't video rate me it's it's creepy it's it just shows it doesn't do anything for me emotionally i don't go ew i can't wait to get with you it makes me think ew i feel sorry for you did your mom know you do that did did she raise you to be winking in every every five minutes on on camera i i don't think so you know so it's just gross and but maybe maybe it all stems from the men's room scenario where you are in the locker room scenario where you're just out everyone sees everyone naked I, I think people should should have privacy you know i mean maybe that's the virgo in me the conservative part of me you know even though i'm very liberal in in most of my uh things i just I mean, I just feel like, but it's, but your body is your body, you know, it's like, that's your, your, um, it's almost like a covenant with God in, in my opinion, you know, like we're, we're, uh, created by God. Our bodies are created, our souls, you know, kind of inhabit the body for a while. Um, and we're using our body to, um, experience and feel and see and, 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 and do things so that God can understand what it's like to have the experience of it, not just the knowledge of it, you know, and I don't think that we should be constantly cheapening ourselves, you know, I don't think that just because a man is gay that he would want to be in a room with a bunch of strangers looking at their junk and having them, you know, look at then sizing up and, oh, look at mine versus yours. And it's just kind of weird, right? I just think it's weird. I don't get that. I don't understand why that was ever a part of our society. You know, just to have it all hang out like that. It's just, it's kind of strange. I mean, and and what's weird is I think in the 40s and 50s, it was like this too. You know, I mean, no wonder we ended up with the free love sexual revolution, people doing it in in cornfields in middle nowhere or in public, you know, middle nowhere, like, you know, Woodstock. But in the 70s, but I don't know. I mean, it's kind of, I don't think we should have hangups about our own nudity, but I don't think that we should have to feel subjected to people staring at our, at our, you know, private parts. They're called private parts for a reason. They should be kept private. (laughs) 
until they have their part to play. <laughs> you know, when it's time, it's time. And to everything, there is a season under the sun. And, and I don't know, it's my little rant and diatribe about that. But I feel like men and women should be treated with an equal amount of respect and they should treat themselves with an equal amount of respect. And I know that you guys are treating yourselves with respect. And if you're not, you know, you need to start, you know, if you're a woman and a man says, well, all these other women sent me pictures of their boobs. Fine. Go have sex with them. You're not going to see my boobs. My boobs are for, you know, someone who I care a great deal about, right? Like maybe I'm in a relationship with somebody or maybe, you know, I'm saving myself for marriage again. You know, you could do that. You're allowed, you know, and that's another thing. I mean, what if you have a year where you're hog wild and you just go around sleeping with a whole bunch of people the following year, you could be celibate. You don't have to be that person and you can change. You could go either way. You could be, you know, a monk for two, three years and not have sex and then go around having sex a lot for the next year. It's your body. It's your sexuality. It's your everything, you know? And so I think you shouldn't judge yourself and shouldn't allow other people to judge you and and push you around and, and hey, you know, I want to see a picture of that. Uh, well, you know what? There's porn on the internet. That's why. You want to see that? Go look at free porn. You want to see my body, then you're going to have to commit a lot more than a 10 minute conversation and a WhatsApp exchange. That's just kind of how it is. All right. Getting a little too political there, but, but I honestly, this gender stuff, like the, like, you know, if we all had the same exact body, well, a it would be super boring, but it, like none of this stuff would be a thing. Let me see your body. Oh wait, I got a mirror. You know? If we were all like asexual or, you know, uh, we had two sexes or I don't know if we all had the exact same body, like the human being or human. Yeah. The human being or human being in community. Remember that (laughs) they're just trying to make it like totally like race neutral, gender neutral. (laughs) Oh my God. You guys got to go see that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go look it up on YouTube. Let's look up like episodes of community or communities, human being. <laughs> and I think it was just like, at first I think it was a guy like in a, um, maybe it was an all white, like bodysuit. And then they were like, Hey, why is it gotta be white? And then I think later it was like a guy in an all green bodysuit, <laughs> like even, you know, his head, like totally, it was obviously a guy, but they tried to make it as neutral as possible to represent everyone in the school. <laughs> It was a wild failure, but, um, (laughs) it was super hilarious. And I, when I went to Berkeley, uh, trick or treating a few years back, well, long year, a lot of years back, like in 2012, we went trick or treating (laughs) in Berkeley and we went to the rich area because we heard a rumor that they were giving full size candy bars. We got a couple, but, um, my kids were so stoked. They're like, that is so cool. And a lot of the, a lot of the uh, people would be like, Oh, maybe mama would want a candy bar too. And I'd be like, thank you. And then they'd be like, maybe mama would want a glass of wine too. So I got a few Dixie cups full of wine from Berkeley, Berkeley fricking rocks for Halloween. (laughs) But, um, and some people are giving like away mini waters. I'm like, that is the best idea because you know, kids get thirsty walking around in their hot costumes and being all sweaty. So Berkeley rocks for Halloween, but I saw a couple human beings <laughs> from the community, like from the community show. And it was hilarious. They're just like walking around and it was so creepy to see that. I was like, literally one of the creepiest Halloween costumes I've ever seen in my life was that one. Cause to walk around at night and to turn around and it's like right there, it's like, you know, cause there's no face, there's no face to that costume. And it's just like, Oh, it's just incredibly creepy. Anyway, I wanted to tell you guys happy day of the dead for uh, those of you who are in countries or areas or regions that celebrate day of the dead today on the 1st of November. Tomorrow will be the, um, <clears throat> further celebrations here in Cuenca we're going to have a bunch of stuff today I think there was a parade I know for sure tomorrow there's going to be a lot of stuff downtown there have been like a lot of clubs open with the Halloween theme people are still dressing up it's like pretty exciting it's like 
it's kind of like a three-day party, but people don't really get excited about it here on October 31st. It's more like the 1st and the 2nd of November, so I'm going to go downtown tomorrow. Uh, oh, hala, as they say, as God wills it, I'll try to go down there and uh, see what I can see, report what I can report. But um, anyway, I've noticed a lot more energy, like, oh my God, energy pouring into me. Had a lot of cosmic naps where I was like, totally normal, everything fine, and all of a sudden, that's it, and I just fall asleep for an hour. Um, and then wake up and it's like, oh, okay, I'm fine now. That's weird. Had plenty of sleep last night, slept really deep, felt great, woke up. And then a couple hours later, just that's it. Got to do the cosmic nap. So I feel a lot of energy, a lot of radiation coming in from the sun. I feel it. I feel it. And tonight I'm going to channel the Lyrans. Those are the, um, hominids with feline features, basically, they're, they look like humans with cat heads, which I think is pretty cool and inventive. There's, you know, it's almost like, I feel like uh, some of the stuff that I've seen God create, I feel like God must do a lot of acid. <laughs> but I think these are all great and wonderful ideas. Maybe God's just on really good weed, like some good OG Kush or something. But <laughs> but anyway, the Lyrans are here with me. I'm actually already connected with them. I'm going to finish the rest of the intro, then we're going to get into it, and we're going to have them channel tonight so yay all right um on disclosurenews.it at 12 30 utc time they write the new chart shows slight movements around midnight utc that have reached power 18 for the rest is just background movements around 10 and then the 1700 report says the situation shows a continuation of the variations also in the second part of the day where the greatest peak of the day that we had was power 21. So by power, they mean just hertz frequency. And I'm looking at their chart. It's not a lot of activity today. And they really did not have any uh, blank spots. You know, there's, there was no interruption of service today, which was good. I did have, you know, yesterday Mercury Retrograde did start and we'll be in this now for a couple weeks. So I think two or three weeks is usually what it lasts. I'll let you know when we get to that point. There's still shadow periods. So, I mean, (laughs) if you're a Gemini or a Virgo, you're going to be affected for the next six weeks, probably. Five weeks, you know, minimum. So just... Be ready. This is a a good time to get back to old projects that you haven't finished. This is a good time to get back to old scripts you threw in a drawer a year ago and you haven't written again. Or if you've um, got art projects or painting projects or maybe you started to knit yourself a scarf last year, last fall, and then you stopped doing it. Now's the time to get that out of the drawer and finish your scarf. It's getting cold. You're going to need it. So anything like that... um, If there's been people you've been thinking about lately uh, that you haven't seen in a long time, maybe years or months, maybe that was time to give them a call, you know, just see what they're doing, do a little follow-up. Not a good time to uh, begin a relationship. If you started dating before Mercury went, you know, uh, retrograde, you can, you can, you can continue cautiously date, um, but be aware that this is a time for technology and travel plans to go awry and for communications of all types to just be absolutely like thrown to the wayside, like communication. A lot of times at this time, just no, (laughs) you know, uh, thinking clearly mental fogginess that might happen, especially if you are ruled by Mercury, like Virgos and, and, um, Gemini's, you just have to do everything, double check everything, dot your I's, cross your T's and go back and make sure you dotted your I's and crossed your T's and then go back a third time and look for misspellings in any correspondence. Uh, a number of weeks ago, I, I had applied for a daily coast job and they narrow, they had thousands and thousands and thousands of applicants and only two people got the job. Not one of them was me, <laughs> darn it. But that's okay because I have a feeling that Jenner Deal is going to help me grow my 
podcast and then I won't really need to get a job. So, ha, huh, there it is, Jenner. This is our challenge. <laughs> but, um, so I didn't get the job, but they actually said they're going to keep my resume on file for the future because they thought it was impressive. And I'm like, ah, so thank you, Daily Coast. I don't think anybody's listening to my show from the Daily Coast, but if you are, thank you guys because I do tend to rant and rave about politics once in a great blue moon. So, um, <clears throat> you know, it's not the scope of my show, but sometimes I just, I just got to say it and I'm so glad. Oh my God. The impeachment inquiry is moving forward. Thank God. Thank God. Maybe that's what we'll get for Christmas, right? Our white house back. Maybe. All right. In heartmath.org, uh, I'm going to tell you guys the Schumann resonance frequencies for that. California started off at midnight at 112 hertz frequency, and by 4 a.m. they went up to 114 hertz frequency. And Hofuf, Saudi Arabia started off at zero, and they stayed at zero. So they're going to be the new ones that maybe stay at zero for several days, which is crazy, right? Maybe everyone gets a turn. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, Lithuania started off at 145 hertz frequency at midnight, and they stayed pretty steady all the way across. They landed again on 145 hertz frequency. Didn't change a bit. Alberta, Canada started off at 176 and went all the way up to 183 hertz frequency by 4 a.m. And... Um, Northland, New Zealand started off at 71 hertz frequency at midnight and went down to 68 hertz frequency by 4 a.m. And uh, Holulu, South Africa started off at 157 hertz frequency and ended at 153 hertz frequency by 4 a.m. So there you have it. Those are all your Schumann resonance numbers um, for the past 24 hours. Um, I don't know why they they never go past 4 a.m. until the next day, and then you could go see what happened every hour. So it's like kind of two days behind on the heartmath.org. You only have four hours of data for the following day. But um, it's interesting. It's like, why are those numbers so much higher? Um, Of course, except for the zero. (laughs) Not higher than the Italian one, but I don't know. I think uh, if we continue to put six more somewhere else on the globe, we would get a, a, a much more accurate reading of the ionosphere and the energy contained therein. And so I think, I don't know, I think it's going to continue to be interesting like that. But it's been kind of middle of the road, hundreds, hundred, you know, uh, 50, up to 200, not too, too much. I mean, a few days ago when it was 650 over in Hulului, that was that blew my mind. That blew my mind, and zero also blows my mind. You know, in either direction, this outlying skewed numbers makes me wonder, like, what what is that really? What what is this? It's really crazy. So, okay, one hundred forty-four thousand, <laughs> which is a metaphor because there's a lot more of us that are awakening right now. Uh, we are on less than one hundred forty-four. <laughs> 144, woohoo! Uh, in A Course in Miracles or ACIM.org, we are um, able to find free lessons through that website for the Foundation of Inner Peace, or we can go to our Google Play Store or our iStore. Is it called iStore? I don't know what it's called. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Not to be confused with EYE. I saw the the crawling eye. Mystery Science Theater 3000 yesterday. So enough with the eye puns and metaphors already. But <laughs> but I don't know. What's it for iTunes Store or I? I don't even know what it's called when when you have the expensive phone. <laughs> but uh, anyway, just yeah, you could go download A Course in Miracles for free. There's a bunch of apps. They're all free. The lessons are free, and they're complete lessons as if you bought the book. So, uh, you know, save you a bit of money, and you can help boost, boost, boost your energy, um, spiritually speaking, and raise your vibrations. That's pretty cool. 
But today there's only three sentences because as we are still on the fourth review. So here we go. The first thought is the one we've been thinking for (laughs) three days, hopefully. My mind holds only what I think with God. My mind holds only what I think with God. And also from taken from lesson 127, there is no love but God's. There is no love but God's. Lesson 128 has a single thought for this review. The world I see holds nothing that I want. The world I see holds nothing that I want. There you go. That's it. (laughs) That's all she wrote for that. So I'm going to take a quick break. Maybe put more ice on my tongue. (laughs) Oh, my poor tongue. It's so weird. I'm afraid to look in the mirror. I bet it's like all the like little tongue buds are white or something. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. (laughs) Enough tongue talk. (laughs) All right. uh, I'll be right back. And I'm going to be channeling the Larens from Star System Vega. They've been displaced since their home world was blown up, but they are with us tonight. They're fifth dimensional beings, and they'll be right, they'll be here in just a few moments, right after this. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's high time you did. It is the absolute easiest way to make a podcast. First of all, it's absolutely free. Second of all, they have creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. You guys have known that I've been doing this for eight months using the Anchor.fm app right on my cell phone, and I have done it everywhere, right? I have recorded this in my living room, my bedroom, little cafes in Quito, Ecuador, all over Cuenca. It's so absolutely easy to make your podcast and editing is just a snap. Anchor also will distribute your podcast for you. And it took me about two and a half months to become syndicated. And now I'm available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more and so can you you can make money from your podcast also and there's no minimum requirement you get paid from your very first listener it is everything that you need to make a podcast all in one place so please if you are interested in making a podcast of your very own do not hesitate to start with anchor Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Metaphysical Soul Speak is run on sponsors and listener support. This means listeners like you. If you are so inclined, To support my efforts and my little podcast, please visit me at anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical and pledge an amount of your choosing today. Thank you. All right, guys, I am here with uh, the Lyrans. I'm already connected with them and I did the ki ah sha exercise where you touch your forehead and say those words three times. You touch your third eye and helps to open up your third eye in the event that the Lyrans want to show me something. I also have connected with my, my, oh, I'd like to be connected to my holy guardian angel. I forgot that one. Also all the archangels, my spiritual team, my spirit guide and prime creator. So... I do all that for spiritual protection, especially in the time now that we're in because of 
veil between the worlds is thinner at this time of year, uh, probably through the 3rd of November, it'll be that way. And then the veil will get thicker again, <laughs> or I guess, or stronger. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, we'll go back to our merry way or go along our merry way. But basically, um, the kind of telepath that I am is I am a, not a trance channel, but a telepathic channel. So basically the kind of channel I am is that a telepathic channel. I don't allow uh, beings to take over my body. I just telepath. So I use a lot of kinesiology or muscle testing to see if the message I am getting is actually the message they're sending. A lot of times they'll pluck out thoughts or ideas that I've recently said on the show. And I always question that, like, is it just me making crap up? Or (laughs) usually it's they take the um, thoughts that are um, already on the surface. They're already there. And it conveys a similar idea that they wanted to convey usually. So they will um, pluck those more recent ideas just to get a point across faster. Um, They use my language, you know, to communicate an idea. And if you hear them channel through somebody else, they will use that person's language to help channel the idea. Some people are actual trans channels where they allow the beings to take over their body, hop into their body and use their vocal cords and and their muscle uh, movements, their body. But I don't do that. I just do the telepathy. So that's just me. That's what I do. So you guys know, um, I think I'm going to set the phone down though because the Larens they have a very special way of communicating not just through the telepathed words but also through the um they also telepath I mean they also communicate through light language and also physical light language so sometimes when I'm telepathing with them you might hear my arms doing movements and that's when they're giving you downloads and light codes and DNA upgrade energies that will also flow through my voice as I'm saying their words. There's energies coming with that. It's not specifically in the sound of my voice, but it's somehow tacked on energetically. So I don't know what they're going to talk about today. They just wanted to come through and we're going to uh, begin now. I'm going to set the phone down. Hopefully you'll still be able to hear me. Otherwise, I'll have to redo it. Uh, Hopefully that doesn't happen, but we'll see. Um, Let's see here. Saying it down on my other phone because I don't want the microphone blocked. Okay. Am I connected to the larynx? Muscle testing says yes. All right, great. Um, I'd like to uh, welcome you guys to the show and thank you for being here and you may begin your transmission now. <sighs> Hello, we are the Lyrians, and we are coming to connect with you on multiple levels. We are, as you have called us, the cat headed people, <laughs> but we are very much like you are. We just look a little bit different, but you will probably like the way that we look if you happen to love cats. He, <laughs> but, but we are every bit as intelligent as you are, and we don't want to say more so, but we're just normal people. You know, we're, we're people like you are. So we don't want you to focus on our outer appearance, but instead go inward and focus on our words as you hear them so that you can understand what we are saying on a deeper level so we don't wish for you to focus on the shallow point we don't focus on what you look like (laughs) so we just um, have accepted we've learned over the years to accept other people from other places that look a lot different than us not just in terms of skin color or height, the way you do on your planet, but like there's beings that are way different than than us. And so we've 
adapted over the years to that. And so we just ask that you try as well to adapt to us because someday we hope soon we will come to see you in person. Oh, are you guys saying that? Okay. They're joking about it. They say someday we want to come and see you soon in person. <laughs> they said, see, we can have a sense of humor about our appearance because we know about your connection to cats. <laughs> okay. So uh, what do you guys want to talk about today? We are here to talk about energy and the way that it flows in your world now that you have anchored into the fifth dimension. We are interested in how this will affect you because no world has done what your world has already done. We are excited about it. We wish for you to energetically adapt quickly and we're hoping tonight is the night in which we are able to shed some light upon your newfound reality that you're not even able to see clearly yet but you will soon now that you are anchored into the fifth dimensional light you're going to understand pretty quickly that your bodies are less and less dense every day you become less matter more space but always the same amount of energy the energy flows through you differently that's why a lot of times you need to take a nap that's why a lot of times things that did not affect you before such as having a beer or even a cigarette or whatever you do that might be a little bit of a vice for you these things have taken their toll so to speak on your system some of you could normally take two or three cups of coffee now you find if you imbue this much you are very very jittery and very very nervous it affects your nervous system in a different way sometimes this is because of depletion of minerals in your diet sometimes this is caused by your nervous system being more delicate than it used to be and your body trying to adapt these changes are not always going to be the same for everybody and they're not always going to be at this level of for lack of a better word freakiness <laughs> where you drink one cup of coffee every day forever for 20 30 years and now you drink a cup of coffee and you get extra jittery that's not gonna last for very long a year from now you could go back to having the same cup of coffee without consequence but right now because you're anchoring into the fifth dimension you are able to lift yourself up in vibration but it's taken a lot out of you emotionally mentally spiritually and especially physically as it has depleted vitamins and minerals we wish for you to understand that we are your brothers we love you as family just as the Pleiadians have expressed this to you and others we work closely with these other groups that you have been in contact with and we know that there is a planned integration and a formal welcoming of you to a greater galactic community we are so excited for this day to happen but it's not going to be this year it will be in three to four years from now in the worst case scenario five years but we honestly are believing two and a half years as other groups have said the Arcturians have said what you need to do is ask us directly to come and we will come faster than three to four years the more people that ask the more we realize how much we are wanted 
we won't go where we're not wanted. And the more people that wake up, the more we realize that it is becoming more closer to the time in which your reality changes completely and you are welcomed into the fold of our galactic community. It is as wonderful as you could imagine it to be. You will meet beings from other planets and other worlds and other, sometimes other dimensions if they are able to appear uh, from the seventh and ninth dimensions, they will come down here if they're able. And you will learn a lot spiritually. You will learn a lot about yourself as a spiritual being because even though we are all from different planets, different cultures, different customs. We look different in some cases. We all come from the one will, the one true God, the prime creator. We are all part of the same plan. It's just that the plan is so much bigger than you might have realized even just a few years ago. We are interested in opening and creating and constantly having a dialogue with you. We do this through your channels, your trans channels and telepathic channels. We do this through dreams. We do this through visiting you. We observe you sometimes, um, but only if you ask us to come and be in your life, we will. In past on this show, we have appeared in the room without a, f a formal a warning of this and you got to hear that it sounds like a crackling or paper being rustled around maybe like a plastic bag in your world uh, making a sound as you touch it that's the sound it, it uh, that our that our technology makes when we come into a room we don't appear physically because it's too scary but sometimes you'll hear that sound and you might feel the presence of us in your room only if you've asked for us to be in your life. We will come and imbue our knowledge, our light language, and we will talk to you, communicate to you through telepathy if you have it, clairvoyance or psychicness, automatic writing or other forms. A lot of times we'll just come and observe you and give you dreams or ideas to have dreams about us so that you can understand us more but so you can understand yourself more which for us is the most important thing understanding yourself spiritually is the highest calling as far as we are concerned we wish to discuss the energetic changes that are happening besides what we've already mentioned the molecules in your body are growing and allowing more space to go between them you are at this time sloughing off molecules you don't need your body will more or less hold the same amount of space but you're going to have more space in between each individual cell some of you feel as if you are expanding and that is the energy and the vibration that you're feeling is that of expansion but you are not going to look fat or bigger you're not going to appear taller or broader you are going to be the same or maybe even a little smaller but as you slough off the physical molecules that you no longer need your energy is going to expand and grow and the molecules in your body will become wider and wider and further and further apart this is not going to be a painful process it will be sometimes arduous and you will need more naps sometimes you will have glitches in which you are not thinking clearly you don't feel like you're functioning you, you might lose a little bit of coordination now and again you might have a heart palpitation now and again you're going to feel strange and different and it's going to give you the sensation so unique that you've never experienced it before 
but we wish to assure you that everything's going to be okay. You are okay. Everything's going to be fine. And everything is all perfect and in divine order. A lot of the things that are helping these changes are not only us sending you love and light and energy, but also the earth herself, the spirit of the planet, is giving you energy from below. The sun is giving you energy from above. And your magnetosphere has parted itself as the magnetic um, poles shift. And the magnetosphere has gone, well, in your words, maybe lackadaisical. It doesn't seem to be doing its normal job. But everything is timing and energy. Everything is meant to do what it is doing right now. We are sorry to see the, the fires and natural disasters in your world at this time. We are sorry about it. We do see an energetic cleansing, but we also see that some of these things have gotten out of control and have gone beyond where they should have been. We are sending you prayers and light and love that you can get through these troubled times quickly. We see there are a lot of revolutions going around the world socially. We understand that this is also part of the grand scheme. People are waking up and understanding what their governments have been doing to them. A lot of people in the governments will also be waking up and then will start to understand what they have been doing to the people and what pains they've been perpetuating and what hardships they have been causing and this is all going to change. It will still take time. Bureaucracy always takes time. The only way you can change your life for the better at this time is to change your mindset, change it to believe that you are a powerful spiritual being. Stop thinking that you are a victim of the government or the policies because you are special. You are loved. You are every bit as loved by Prime Creator as any other being in the universe. So our message is that as your bodies are changing and growing and your molecules are expanding, you will require less fuel in the form of food and more fuel in the form of sunlight and energy. If the magnetosphere is cracked where you live, we do not recommend going in the sun for more than a couple minutes at a time. In fact, not every day, three or four days a week is sufficient to um, get the vitamin D that your bodies require, that we've heard you speak of. You don't really need to be outside too much. Your DNA is going to be changing automatically from all of the particles that you can't even see that are constantly penetrating your bodies to change and grow them in new, unique and individual ways. We see that your social structures and your familial structures are going to change once again. Whereas traditionally there've been, you know, the typical two parents, two kids. We see that many of you have taken up the practice of having three parents in a relationship, and we applaud you for having opened your hearts and minds to another world of possibilities. But we see that even that will be changing. Everything is going to become more uh, I'm trying to see this word they're saying equanimous e it's almost like um, not an anonymous but unanimous and equal is that what you guys are trying to say and also testing says yes so they're trying to say that all across the board there's going to be a lot more equality in relationships there will be more freedom there will be more open spaces. There will be more 
going to be an in the togetherness, not um, closed. Like people are not going to be jealous or suspicious anymore of um, other people as much as they were before. There won't be as much anger surrounding these kinds of issues. And we see a much more open society. And we don't think that there's going to be a lot of the cheating going on and the social ills that have been brought um, upon people that are trying to have relationships. It won't be as prevalent because telepathy is going to grow and grow and grow. And it's easy to be caught <laughs> if you're doing something wrong by all the people around you because they everyone can read everybody's mind. So it's going to be read in the aura and the energy field surrounding the person, all the things that you think and feel, and it's going to be very obvious what's happening um, you know, with any given individual. So we're not saying that... Um, anything from your third dimensional world is going to happen like we're not talking about um, alternative lifestyles where people sleep with a lot of people or people are in a couple and they don't sleep with anyone not even each other we're not talking about those kinds of relationships we're talking about the way that your perceptions have been like many people we have seen in the past will hold energies of jealousy and competitiveness and what you would consider to be negative emotions and a great deal of your emotional body has been taken up on these ideas and these thoughts and feelings what we're saying is you're going to be able to relax a lot more because you're going to understand um, if your partner really truly loves you or not just by looking at them and sensing their aura You'll be able to sense when it's time to part ways um, with individuals and the breakups won't be so hard. The negative emotions that usually surround it won't be there because you'd be like, yeah, I agree that we, we're not energetically compatible anymore. That's okay. We will go find, you know, people we are more energetically compatible with. That's what we mean in the way that your relationships will be changing. So we don't want to, we don't wish to alarm you or panic you. And we don't want you to think that suddenly you're going to be marrying in groups of 10 or suddenly that love won't exist and you won't marry at all. You know, we're not talking about those kinds of things because we're just talking about the way that you perceive the relating. There's going to be a great deal of intimacy mentally and emotionally and spiritually there will be more um, intimate moments, more looking into each other's eyes and experiencing the other person's soul. The veil that you speak of that um, keeps you from seeing things, um, that's been lifted already. You're anchored into a different dimension already. Now that you're here, you're going to notice that when you go out with friends or potential partners or mates or even if you have been married for a number of years you're going to when you sit down together and you look into each other's eyes you're going to see something there that you never saw before it's going to be a great deal more honest a lot more honesty than there has ever been in human history and this is going to shake some of you maybe to your core because you're going to admit freely emotions that you didn't even know you had you know not just hiding or stuffing them down but you things that you never had a conscious awareness of you will start to have conscious awareness of so if you ever felt like maybe your partner was not the right one for you now would be the time to express why you thought that and your partner will accept that. We see that is a time that's coming. And you'll either work things out or part ways as friends. There won't be bad breakups anymore. Not, not the way that they used to be. You can always choose to have the negative emotions and the negative um, energy 
you can always grab that and take that into your world and have that as a part of your reality. But it's now more of a conscious choice versus how it just happened before, seemed to just have happened before where everything gets negative. And we have witnessed and observed your rituals of breaking up in the past where um, there are stereotypes surrounding this, so we don't want to talk about that. But, you know, the eating of the ice cream and the watching of the sad movies or the screaming into the pillow or screaming into the wind or breaking things, those have been typical behaviors that we have witnessed humans display um, at the end of a relationship. And what we see in your future is you can choose that if you want. You don't need an excuse to eat ice cream. You can eat it whether you're happy or sad. <laughs> it's not going to be a part of the rituals that you had before. And you have a lot more space to just release the emotion really quickly. You know, so it will be like if someone want, wishes to break up with you, it's going to be, yeah, you're right. We're not energetically compatible. I think we should part ways as well. But the good news is we could always be friends. We could always be together um, in other capacities. We can help each other out with business or with our, our lives or cook for each other once in a while. And hey, maybe we'll find someone who's more compatible for each other and Maybe we could set each other up. The jealousy won't exist and the bad energy won't exist. Not to the extent that it used to. If you have gotten rid of the remnants of all of these emotions from your body and you've done your spiritual work, for sure you will be in this category of person that has a very high quality energy about them where they won't um, hold on to that negative past or they won't re-invite that or reintroduce that into their world anymore. We see that if uh, you are single, for the single people, what will be happening is you will automatically attract the ones that are the highest quality for you. And it's going to happen in wild, weird, and mysterious ways from your perspective, but it's more readily available the law of attraction it's more a you are more able to tap into those energies of manifestation so much quicker and that's why all of the people that you need drawn to you to help you in your life maybe you are looking for the right apartment or the right house to live in you will attract the right person to show you exactly where you need to live processes will take a lot less time if you want to go look at houses you won't have to look at 40 50 60 houses you will attract automatically within the first five or six houses the one that's yours you, you know we see a lot of those kinds of processes will be um, seemingly more automated like what do you want these are things I want the person's able to listen to you and by their listening, they will take you energetically. They will feel it out energetically and they'll automatically take you to the place that energetically matches your vibration. And although a lot of people will not be consciously aware of it, we see this is how things are going to happen. Life is going to become easier because it's going to be a lot more about vibration and energy than ever before. You're not going to have to fight against a current to make it in your chosen field or in your relationship. The idea of fighting for the love to us is a foreign concept we always thought was strange, but you aren't going to have to fight for that anymore. The more people wake up, human rights will um, no longer be an issue because everyone will automatically be given rights because it will be obvious to the awakened ones. And the more people that awaken, the more this will become a non-issue. So we also see that your human relationships 
in regards to holding others back based on what we consider to be arbitrary things such as gender or color of skin or handicap uh, you know people that have uh, infirmaries we we're seeing that there's been a lot of horrible uh, discrimination but it's always by the sleeping ones who perpetuate this kind of um, negativity and energy of holding someone back on purpose based on some aspect of what they've chosen to embody in this moment we see all souls regardless of what part of the universe they come from all souls have a perfection and they have a quality about them and when they can tap into that quality about them they are able to become the best they can be and blossom forth and help all those around them okay they're showing me you guys have so are you guys just telling me that there is a way that you have to tap into the core in your world in your words they're saying yeah so okay the uh, Pleiadians gave us Plua Rasa is it like that yes but it's our version in our language and it's for a slightly different thing so in order to attract the highest vibrational thing to you and to raise your vibration and to become like a tuning fork with that thing that you seek whether it's looking for a perfect book to read or a perfect mate to spend your life with or you're looking for a, a car or a house or like a material item or you're looking for a friend you can use this to tune yourself to your highest best vibration and then you say it a second time as a honing signal like a device to send out into the universe and it will land on the thing that is tuned to you the highest vibration then you say it a third time to solidify that link and that thing will be brought to you just like this rapidly maybe not that fast but it's going to be very rapid so we're going to give you the mantra now it might take me a minute guys to get this so um, you're saying ling is it links it's link okay the word link l-i-n-k <laughs> but it sounds like English is it English no they're saying no it's our language okay Uh, link okay I'm gonna have to kind of go free flow for a minute until I get it because this is it, it's a whole other language I'm trying to hear something for the first time and it's like what link ku linkush arani is that it linkush arani linkush arani ashatanda is that the whole thing? Ashantata. Oh my god, this is like harder than Fuarasa. But we'll, I want to get this. So, if I was going to channel the language, will you guys just tell, like, help me through that? Okay, they're saying we want to say a blessing to you so that you guys can all get the mantra. But what we're going to say now is not the mantra itself. This is our blessing. So, anyone who hears this, will be able to link up to their highest vibration right away through the energy of these words and then when we get to it we're going to show you the quick and easy version to do this for yourself it's a very short mantra okay so all right Ninkusharananda kadandi see yeah, yes i mean okay Okay, um, Hayasha wasanta ba ala wanda bu asha wa asa wanda la 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 Aisha linta wanda la Aisha wanda bu. I shall wonder who Linda wa Linda Shana wa Arabu 
Link Shawana Ba Ah Ranu. Okay. So this doesn't sound like the light language you gave us before. He said, no, this is one of our regional dialects and one of our parts of our planet that used to exist from a tribal people. And it's a simple song they taught their children to manifest the one thing that they desired the most. Every day, whatever they desired would be brought to them. And they raise their vibrations so that they would not want something that would hurt others or themselves. So that's what that does. So now can you tell, now uh, this is me, Elena, asking you guys now, can you tell us what is our easy way of saying this so that we can link to our highest good and then link to the thing that brings us the most joy and helps the most amount of people, including us, basically, right? That's what you're saying this will do. Yes, that's what they're saying this will do. Okay. Linkuasha. Ta, is it Tata? No, Tada. Linkuasha, Tada. Tada, da, Tada, ba, Tada, ba. Okay. Linkuasha, Tada, ba. Linkuasha, Tada, ba. That? Okay, they're saying yes, that's it. So, Linkuasha, they're saying links you to your higher self and your best, highest good, and to the best, highest good of all those around you in your immediate energy field. Linkuasha. And then we say, Tadaba. That's right, Tadaba, like, Tada. Ba, right? They're saying yes. T A D A B A. H at the end, they said. Tada ba. It's a little bit ba. Tada ba is that one word, one thought? Tada ba. It's like um, a manifestation tool of. There's things like a honing device. Like honing out, like it, like a radar going out, and then when you get to the thing that you that links to your energy the most, it's like beep beep beep, like you know, like it's gonna beep, like a boop boop boop, and as it beeps or boops or whatever, boop boop, it's gonna take you in the direction of that thing, and that thing is going to come in the direction of you. And if there's a person that stands in the way between the two things, but not really in the way of a person that can be the link up between the two things, you and your house, you and your car, you and that friend, you and that person, that person will be uh, like the way station on the way to that thing or person or event or the thing that you wish. So that person will come to you and help you with the thing. So, Linkua Shata Daba, Linkua Shata Daba, Linkua Shata Daba. That is this um, mantra that is going to help you. So, now they're saying, for example, they want me to, to think of something that I want. So, okay, I want a house with a swimming pool. I have a specific one in mind that I really love. But I want that one or something better in case there's something that a house that links up with my energy better. So you guys know about that. So I like that house because it has stone walls and, you know, like a castle. It's got one round room because it's got like a tower and it's got um, a swimming pool. It's really nice indoors and it's got a big yard and... Um, and really high high walls around the house. So <laughs> instead of a moat, it's got a big fence around. It's not even a fence. It's like solid walls and no one could get in. So it's very secure. So that's, and it has fireplaces inside as well. It's very nice. It's actually a very nice house. So that's a house I want or something better if that's not energetically my link up. So they're telling me to do go through this. So you say out loud what you want, just like I did. 
you know, maybe you want a car, say the car, the kind, make, model, whatever, or, you know, point A to point B car or a beautiful car, whatever it is you want. So um, maybe you want a car that runs on electricity and not fossil fuels, which would be the enlightened choice, right? Or one that maybe runs on fossil fuels, but that either is a hybrid or maybe one that has less, um, you know, has like a super high gas mileage, you know, versus like 16 miles, maybe has 70 miles a gallon and, you know, or maybe can run on uh, French fry grease, you know, so whatever the thing is that you're most focused on, you got to think about those things. That's what they're showing me. All right. So that's my house. They say, okay, now get a good image in your mind and then close your eyes and imagine you're in your ideal house, whether that house appears to your mind or not. All right, so my ideal house has an indoor pool, so I'm in my pool. And I'm moving my arms around like I'm swimming or that I'm just, I'm floating a little bit in the pool because you guys know how much I want to float. <laughs> so I want to levitate so I can float all the time. So I'm doing this, I'm, I'm making motion, I'm in my pool. And now they say, while you're making an image or motion of what will bring you that thing faster, it will make you visualize you're in that thing. So while you're making that motion, so I'm doing the swimming, the swimming motion. <laughs> there, so now they say, Linkua sha tadaba, Linkua sha tadaba, Linkua sha tadaba. They say to sit for up to 30 seconds after. Feel the energy. Yeah, I feel the energy of the house. It's like linked to me. And I kind of feel like it's in a direction that I, I didn't imagine it would be. Okay, yeah, it is behind me. And I feel like an energetic link to that house now. That's really weird. Ooh, this is really fun. This actually works. <laughs> they said, you're welcome. <laughs> Write that down, guys. Write it down. Uh, yeah, and they said, if you just say it and you don't have any specific thing in mind, it just will raise you to your highest vibrational state. And it'll raise all the people around you to their highest vibrational state so that when you do want something, whether it's material or um, maybe idea for a book to write or um, you're looking for inspiration to write a new musical piece, if it's creative or bringing a new friendship into your life or linking you up with your one true blue love or your two or three true blue loves because they said we don't judge. That's good. <laughs> And also, they, they don't mean heteronormative. It's like, you know, whatever. Whatever. They say they're not even against interspecies or interplanetary uh, sexuality or sensuality or relationships. Like, they're all for people um, finding true love that will raise and lift their spirits. So they don't mind if it's like, you know... Arcturian and human or you know human and Pleiadian or or any other alien race like out there like they they say that in the conglomeration all the community of all the different races out there from different planets they don't they don't tend to judge they don't judge um, interspecies relationships they understand that it can be harder sometimes when you come from two different worlds, but and maybe two different sets of biology. But um, there isn't the judgment out there, not the way that Earth has seen for various things and a lot of arbitrary things like hair color, they're saying, or even eye color in some communities they witnessed. It just, they're saying kind of blew their mind. Like, why is that such an issue? <laughs> so so what they're saying is whatever it is you want and if you don't know what you want right now just say it and if you say this in the capacity that you know what you want 
you're going to draw that thing to you really, really quickly. And they said, this is how you're going to eliminate the talk of the house because you're going to be actively linking to that thing. And once you link all of the pieces and parts that will bring that to you, everything's going to fall into place. So, for example, they're saying if there's a house that you want and you vibrate with the house and that house is vibrating now and now the vibratory link has been established on the third round of the mantra, the people that will bring you the money to buy the house, whether it's a job offer or whatever, that will come your way. And if you already have the money, the person's going to sell you the house will come your way. The person that's going to move your stuff to that house will come your way. And they're even saying, because you said you want a swimming pool, you're going to find someone to clean your pool every week without an issue. It's going to be really rapid. You know, you'll meet someone and they'll go, Oh yeah, give me a call sometime. They hand you the card. It's going to say pool man on it or whatever. Pool person. <laughs> And so they're showing me that that's how it's going to work. So um, what if you're looking for a hard to find item that, you know, they're saying like, because they see that I like licorice. So what if there's licorice anywhere in Ecuador, I will meet the person who sells it or makes it or has the know-how or is going to go to the U S can bring some back for me or you know, for that, even if it's something little like that, something that you want, or if it's a necklace and you have a dream about a necklace and you really want that and you've never seen it anywhere, if that necklace exists, it's on its way to you with this one. It's a very powerful mantra. Linkua shot to daba. And they said, don't worry about bringing the things to you because if it's not in your highest interest, this can cut away your energetic wantingness of it. If it's not in your highest interest and it will hurt other people for you to have it, as soon as you say this word, it's going to lift you up so high that maybe you'll find yourself not wanting that thing anymore if it's not good for you, if it's not good for others. This is super helpful. My God, that's like the best thing ever. So changing of relationships, changing of our bodies, and how to change our way of manifestation. Those seem to be the three hot topics for the evening. They say yes. And as always, we think the evening has been perfect. (laughs) Uh, They did it again. They did that twice now. That's awesome. Well, I love you guys. I want to thank you for being on the show. I'm grateful to have you here always when you come and they said, oh, it's our pleasure to be here. We we just want to help. We don't have our home world anymore. We travel many different galaxies and to different planets. And we see um, many different things in our travels. And out of everything we've seen, we've never in our lives thought we would be able to witness a planet transforming from one dimension to another consciously with great deal of conscious effort the way that you guys have. This has been a real learning experience and eye opener for us. And we're grateful that we were able to take part in some small way with it by giving you guys energy and love and information and our observations. Cause well, you know, like your earthly cats, we, like to observe we will sit quietly and observe and we look aloof and detached sometimes but like a cat in your world but we learn a great deal that way by not actively participating until we believe it's warranted and now we believe it's warranted so that's why we're coming now to uh, channel through your people and give you dreams and and telecommunications through telepathy So we will sometimes talk to you in the clouds through various signals and stuff. So if you want signs from us that we're there, just ask us. You will um, get them for sure. 
their show. It's showing me Sekhmet from Egypt. Sometimes that's the sign they will send like a cat head, um, you know, like a cat or Bastet Sekhmet. They're saying you will see the goddess um, Sekhmet. She has a cat head because she was an original Laren. Very cool. All right. All right. They're saying now we must bow out. We've got other other channelings to do around the world and other people to see and visit tonight. We love you. And we're saying your word, namaste. They're bowing to me and I'm bowing to them. Thank you guys. Thank you for coming. They said, you're welcome. And we wish for all of you to be at peace. All right. Good. Thank you guys. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, that's it. Um, I don't have much else to add to that. Wanted to thank you for being on this journey with me, this spiritual um, journey that we've been on for years together. I'm glad that we're all coming together as hashtag soul family, hashtag soul tribe. I think the more we use that hashtag on Twitter and in other places, the more we're going to be able to find each other on um, Instagram as well. So I wanted to thank you for your part in that. Don't forget. Minkua Sha Tadaba. <laughs> Pretty awesome. I mean, I'm vibrating really, really freaking high right now after I said that. And I focus and concentrated on my house. And I feel it. I feel it. And it's like it's behind me to a little bit to the right. I feel it. It's like that's where it's located. It's so cool. I feel like I could almost just keep walking until that energy gets stronger and stronger and I'll be at that thing, that object, or, you know, in my case, the house. Seriously, you guys, I think you should try it. Even if it's like you want to attract a yo-yo to yourself or, you know, like a little small toy or a teddy bear or something or a cup of coffee from a stranger, like they say on the movie, The Secret, try to attract something and imagine it's perfect like the perfect piece of cheesecake <laughs> or the perfect creme brulee. Oh, my favorite desserts, but mostly creme brulee. Oh my God. <sighs> I've had some really, the creme brulee from a little restaurant in LA called Smalls. And it's a really small restaurant. It's like a restaurant and bar. And oh my God, the best creme brulee I've ever had in my life. Oh my God. Big, huge chunks of chocolate in it. Oh, and pieces of fresh banana, which doesn't sound very good in a hot flaming dessert, but it was my first time I ever had it. And I will never forget the way it tastes. So maybe I should do this for that and try to get the best creme brulee to myself. (laughs) I know there's one place in town that does creme brulee. So maybe I, maybe I could just learn how to make it myself though. I mean, self-sufficiency being what it is but um well that's it guys that's all um i hope you had a great 11 one 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 day and tomorrow's another day to uh work with spirits if that's what your inclination is and after that you won't have to worry about the thin veil between the worlds set out a plate for your loved ones tomorrow if you haven't done it already when you have a dinner, just set out a little plate and invite your ancestors to come and dine with you. If um, that appeals to you, it does to me because it keeps my link to my um, the people. A lot of people I haven't met in my family that died hundreds of years before I was born. And maybe they want that link and, they, and that love. And if you're a hereditary witch and you have hereditary magic, they will help link up to you and you'll have the power of all those that came before you behind you and you can lift them up as you lift yourself up probably with Linkua Sha Tadaba <laughs> Hakuna Matata <laughs> all right well you heard that sign we're now at the end so all right I love you guys I love you very much but that's all I gotta say about that for tonight signing off with peace and joy and the high vibes of the holy fifth dimension until next time guys peace
Do you ever wish you could look into the next chapter in your book of life and see what's coming next? What does the universe have in store for you? I can help you with that. I will give you a Celtic cross reading, which is 10 cards, or you can ask me three questions and I use three cards per question. So that's nine cards or I can channel your higher guidance or maybe God directly for you. Maybe you want to talk to your dear departed Aunt Edna because maybe you have a few questions and she was the smartest person you knew. If your deceased relatives are available or your ascended masters, I can channel them for you personally. Let me have one hour to show you the future in your next chapter of your book of life. Readings are $75 and it takes me an hour to an hour and a half to complete. And for this price, you will also be hooked up to the healing grid around the planet for free, which means yours truly, me, I will be giving you Reiki 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the rest of your life. All you have to do is let me know, metaphysicalsoulspeak at gmail.com, and we will explore your future together.